Hey friends, welcome back to a little bit of everything. Vlog number two. If you haven't caught vlog one, uh, go ahead and check it out and I explain what the series and what my videos are going to start involving. I'm going to do less, not less, I'm going to do, I'm going to show you my work, my completed work, but as well I'm going to show you different uh, in process videos. And what do I mean about a little bit of everything? It's just tips, techniques, uh, materials, anything and everything that has to do with uh, dioramas. So this is vlog two. Vlog one showed you, we covered how I cut my lines. I showed you the, uh, the little bit of a different technique with just using a file to file out the lines a little bit uh, thicker. You can see how extreme you could go on my first build how thick I did the uh, lines on this one I actually like I like the grout lines a little bit thicker as opposed to thinner it gives it a like a larger stone kind of look to it but this one I created was a little bit small for 112 scale so I went ahead and made this one which is a little bit larger and scales a little bit better with six inch figures or even seven inch figures so this tutorial is just for folks, you know, starting out in diorama making. Maybe you can take some scrap pieces of foam and you can make a little accessory for yourself. You can start building. And the more you start, the more you uh, complete something, the more confidence you'll get. And the happier you get. And, and if you make a mistake and you mess up, you move on. Look, I messed up. I went to cut my line and I... I split my my brick and it's broken that's life and diorama making I could glue it but why so I just went ahead and I just went ahead and made another and I installed the tea light <clears throat> and I uh, started my flame effect but don't fear <clears throat> this video is solely how do I use my hot glue to make this flame effect? This isn't perfect. It still needs a little bit of work. I want to add more flames, a little bit more of a raging fire. You can see the end result with hot glue there on the flame. And that's that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna shoot for. And uh, you can see it lit up. It gives still gives a nice effect even even when painted. But especially uh, lit in a semi-dark or a dark room. So, and if you, that's the reason why I split these is because you can have easy access, obviously, to the on-off switch. And you have easy access to changing your battery. What good would, would it be if you didn't have access to it and your battery died and you could no longer have that effect? So that's why I made it into uh, two pieces, but... It gives the kind of illusion that it's one piece. So that's that's how you can pretty much solve changing your battery and turning your light on and off. So that's the whole purpose of this. So let's uh, let's grab a tea light and let's uh, let's attempt to make a torch, a flame with hot glue live. Well, not live, but recorded. First time trying this. Uh, usually I usually have the tea light upside down. I usually blow on it to cool it. And we're going to do all that on camera. And hopefully it still remains a halfway decent tutorial. Without myself looking like a fool. But this is diorama making. This is it. <clears throat> in the flesh. So, so what I'll start doing is a lot of folks will cut this off. But I do not. I leave it on and the reason why I leave it on it gives you a good base to start your torch and stop building and because it's 112 scale leaving it on really isn't an issue so I'm gonna try to the best of my ability to show you what I'm doing on camera so you need a couple glue sticks and obviously a hot glue gun and I'm just teasing and adding some hot glue to this with no absolutely no rhyme or reason other than building I'm just building up the base a little bit 
I'm just I just want to build a base where I can I can add and and start creating so what I'll do is the more I start adding is I'll start going in a circular motion like this to, just so it's just not one blob and it kind of gives you a little bit of idea of movement but we're not going to start adding flames yet we're going to let it cool down a little bit we're even going to broaden it out let me see if I can show you on video I'm sorry it's hard to see the camera and also watch what I'm doing here but I'm gonna do my best so yeah no rhyme or reason at this point other than building a base and you want your hot glue gun nice and hot and I'll just come like that and I'll just start adding giving it that it's it's very similar to sculpting but you're just using hot glue obviously and you're just looking for something like that so that's going to be something that we can build off of in regards to our flames so that's what you're looking for at first this is done in sections i am not an expert on this i'm sure guys could whip this up in in minutes but not me my first flame effect took me like an hour because i didn't know what i was doing and to an extent i still don't i'm, st I'm still learning but but I'm becoming uh, happier and happier with every uh, every effect I make because, like I say, the the best way to learn is is sitting down and doing it. I could watch somebody do it till I'm blue in the face, but unless I sit down and start making a flame, uh, I don't really learn for myself. So that's the idea, folks. That's what you want to start with. Whoop, timber. So, and my cat comes down here a lot, so I was lucky to pick up no hair there. So that's what you're looking for, kind of like a, uh, you're just building a base. So as it cools, you can continue to, uh, and what I'll do is I'll just, I'll take it, and I'll just give it a sense of movement. And just very, you want to do this as the glue cools because when it's very hot and pliable too pliable too liquidy i guess it uh it's very obviously very difficult and impossible to to shape so you you let it cool a little bit all right so that's little circles that's the idea you're looking for so i'm going to come in and i'm just going to start Maybe making a flame so the idea is obviously see how I let me see if I can see how you kind of sort of have a flame effect right there and then I would come in and blow on it to cool it and if you want to straighten it a little more you just come in like that so there's one strand of a flame effect, but you have to do that when the the glue is a little bit cool, so it's a little more pliable, and I like to do it upside down, so gravity goes, goes towards the floor, and when you flip it, it holds a flame effect. So that gives you that idea of that particular one so i'm pretty happy with that one that's just one of uh of many so you just decide how and where you want them so i'm gonna i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep it going in regards to because you've got to consider motion and into effect you you kind of want the flames going all over the place so so see that's why I hold it upside down. That if I was to tip that right now, if I was to tip that, it would uh, lose its shape. So I'll come in and I'll burn this pot away, and I'll blow on it a little bit. See what? See when I flip it? See how it goes? 
See how? So if you keep it upside down, it'll hold its shape. And you can just... It's tedious, It's but it's how you can achieve certain... Whoop! Way off camera. Sorry, folks. Forgive me. This is how things are done. This is... I wish I could make it a little more glamorous and, like, breathtaking, but... To achieve certain effects, a lot of time there's ugly stages, and this this is an ugly stage. I think as you go along and follow these videos, you're going to see there's quite often the ugly stage before you get to the uh, to the, like the wow that looks really good. So see how that holds now. That gives you that. That effect and if you've got little strands you just you just come to the top here with the you don't you don't add any more glue you just use the heat from the gun and there you go there's a nice nice effect so you keep doing that and this is nice and this is still a little bit pliable but it's it's like probably 80 percent cooled but you can come in with the heat of the gun and you can shape it just take your time uh, envision even Google images get get some pictures of some flames and you can uh... so we're gonna add one we're gonna add one right here so let me build up a little bit of uh, hot glue and we're gonna I'm gonna put it upside down all right and I'm just gonna I just I just tap it and then and then you add and Bear with me because it's going to take a while to cool. And like I say, keep it upside down. And as it's drying, as it's cooling, you can you can shape it the way you want. You can burn off the little the little excess here. You burn off the little strands. And see how simple that is. You let you can let all that dry. I keep saying dry, but you let it all cool, and then. Uh, you can come back in. And shape it. Forgive my shaky hands. Uh, so, this is it. I hate doing things like this because... I mean, I want to be useful and I want to be helpful. And I hope these really are. And I hope more people follow and like and... And just get on board with creating and enjoying this hobby. And so... I put myself out there, I make myself vulnerable, and but that's okay. That's how we sh that's how we share different techniques and knowledge. So for, for my liking, that's that's looking really good. That's a fantastic uh, beginning. But the flame is is pretty much a little too thin uh, at the base, and we're gonna come and we're gonna thicken the base up. And we're going to add more flame effects. So right now we have them running a little bit high, which is good. Now we're going to come in and build up the center pot. And we'll add some more flames a little bit lower than what we have these. So let me demonstrate, hopefully on camera. So I'm just going to add, just add a blob of hot glue. There's no mistakes because you can always remelt. The hot glue with the, the tip of your glue gun so we're just gonna it's as simple as this you add some hot glue you drag your glue gun across tip it upside down and let's get some smaller flames as such you can even just grab a little bit more if you're not happy with the strands you have you want them a little bit thicker Hopefully you can see that. And we're just going to leave it like that. We're going to let it cool. You can burn your little strands off so you can actually see the flame effect that you want. And we can always trim these later with a uh, pair of scissors. I just like to melt it because the scissors gives it a little bit of a, I don't know, manufactured kind of look. But this is a little more natural. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. 
that's not part of the tutorial. So that's that. This is how it's done now. The ugly stages of diorama making. And see how these, see how these two strands right here, one and two, see how they're so similar in size? And I think what you want to look for, what you want to look for is variety. You don't, you don't want them to, to really look alike. So let me, I'm just going to, uh, I'll show you. I'm just going to burn this. I'm going to make this one shorter. Let me just fix that. I'm going to make this one a lot shorter. So I'll just burn it and tease it. You can even add a little bit of hot glue to this strand right here. But it, it kind of just burns it. Just kind of wrap it. And you can come in and make a different strand. So I'm going to leave that like that. Tip it upside down. And let that cool. And as it's cooling, I just move it. Whoop. I just move it and I shape it. I'm so sorry about not being on camera. But the... Hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully it encourages you to sit down and do it for yourself. And that gives you that effect right there. And that might be a little bit too long and you just come in. And you, uh, you try to make it look as organic and as real as possible. So what you're trying to do is capture movement. Yeah, I mean, you don't want a stagnant flame. You're just trying to capture some movement so I'm adding some more hot glue and I'm just I'm shaping it I'll come in and shape it uh, at a later time as well I'm gonna flip this one upside down hopefully you can see it and I'm gonna catch it and pull catch it and pull so you get the look you're going for and I'm going to I'm going to twist it so that flame isn't as straight as the other one. See, in my mind this all makes sense to me and sometimes I have a difficult time explaining what I'm doing. But I am trying to communicate as best that I can so you can follow along and understand, you know, what I'm doing. So, right here where I added more and say I want a flame coming. I'll just maybe add a little more hot glue right here. Let that remelt and then catch it and then drag. Catch it. You might not get it, what it looks like, what you want it to look like on your first shot. And then drag. Hold it upside down so it holds its shape. You can even drag it. Just like that. And right now it looks a little dirty. I'll come in and, and clean it up. I'll get rid of this little strand here. See that? How that is? You just hit that with your glue gun. You can even leave it for a little bit of a flame. Or you can 100% get rid of it. You can clean this one up a little bit. But that's the idea. That's, that's coming along pretty good. When it's painted, it'll look a lot better. It'll really capture the look of a flame you're going for. And if I could show you, uh, let me show you this piece here. I'm not too happy with this piece here because it doesn't, it doesn't look very organic. It looks very choppy. It doesn't look like a flame should look. So I'm going to, I'm going to fix that even if I have to do it over. I'll fix it. So I just want to narrow it and I'm going to I'm going to melt a good part of this right here. See how that melts? I'm actually going to melt the whole thing and start with a new flame. So I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue right here and just let that sit there. I'm going to flip it upside down and we're going to hold it. And 
let that cure. Let it dry. Let it cool down. Sorry, I'm thinking. I'm just concentrating. I'm having a hard time with this strand. It doesn't want to... It doesn't want to fall into line very well. So yeah, this is diorama making. This is what's involved. For you folks. A lot of times you see the end result, but you don't see, you know, exactly how to do it. And to an extent, that's my fault. Because I think... Even though I think this can be valuable to somebody, I, in my eyes, it just, it's a mess. But hopefully it captures, you know, what you guys are looking for. And I'm going to show you another, I'm going to show you what else I'm going to do. So we're going to leave that like that. I can always come back and fix it. So I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just trying to show you guys how to make your flame so if you if you it's tough to see on camera but at my, my eye just being in person this is just blob like a blob so i'm just gonna tease it i actually need to make it a little you just want to give it a swirl and give it a sense of motion as such so right now it just looks like one big mess, but you'll see in a minute exactly, you know, the look I'm going for. And these pieces you can always, you can always pull off. See how dirty it gets? So a good part of this is clean up. You can just always pull it, pull the strands, you know, clean it up. And you capture that look. I'm going to pull that right off like that. So give that. I like the longer flames. It gives it really that genuine look. But I'm really happy with that outcome. Like I say, it'll look really good when painted. And, and I'll show you on the next video how we paint it. And what we do. But that's how I make my flame effect. A lot of it is just building up. It takes time. As you can see, this this video is already almost 25 minutes. And it's a still a little bit too thin for me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bulk it up a little here. Right here. And then I'm just gonna go like this. So the hot glue is still very, very hot and it's just flowing. So in a minute you're gonna see what I do. Don't hit your camera. Like I do. So it's still, see how it's still very, very hot. So I'm just going to grab it and pull. Grab it and pull. Even if you don't get a huge flame, as long as it's not one big pile of, whoop, all you see is my hairy arm. You just grab it, shape it the way you want. If you don't like it, you can always come back in and melt it and redo it. But we're just adding a slight, small, little flame effect there. You melt your little strands. You can... Mold it and shape it a little bit. And that's it. That's my technique. I think a key a key to making a key to helping you a lot and not getting you aggravated is just taking your time and then sculpting your flames upside down. So gravity gravity does not work against you. That's the key. And that's it. I'll come in and I'll clean up the strands. And you got yourself 
a pretty cool flame effect. And uh, vlog three, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and paint this, and I'll show you uh, my process for painting, which is very very basic. I use I use transparent airbrush paint because I don't want to use opaque because you want the color, but yet you still want when you light it, you still want the transparency so so the light can. Uh, remain you know vibrant and bright and the more opaque your paint is the the less vibrant your paint will be so i like to use transparent airbrush paint or any kind of transparent paint it doesn't have to be airbrush paint uh, the thinner the paint the better because the thicker it'll be more opaque and all i'm doing is just cleaning up the little bit of uh, strands that's it and what you can also do, and what I'll probably do, but I'll do it off camera. Well, I can do it now. Is I, I can always build out the base of the flame. So, so the flame effect, you know. I just add, as you see. I'll let it cool a little bit. And you just shape it. Turn it upside down. So gravity works with you, not against you. And you just add a few more little strands to give it, you know, see why you put it upside down? Just like that. So I do hope this video was helpful. Forgive the ugliness of it. But this is how you achieve certain looks. This is how you achieve this look for a flame. So when I show my videos, I usually just show, wow, look at that. That looks pretty good. How do you do that? Now you know how I did it. That's the ugly stage. And oftentimes to get to the nice stage, there's an ugly stage. It's like renovating your house. You uh, renovate your house. You've got to demolish. you got to... Everything looks ugly. But once you stop putting in the paint and the uh, appliances and and you next thing you know you get a beautiful uh, uh, renovation so i hope this tutorial was helpful i hope i communicated okay so let me actually turn the light on maybe you can see the effect before it's painted so what you want is just, a, you want the base a little bit wide and come out and just and just thin it down to give it that. And, and you're looking for movement, you're looking for, uh, for randomness in your flames. So, alright guys, that's uh, vlog, vlog number two, how to make a flame for your torch with hot glue. I hope it was helpful. I'm still in the process of learning this technique. But the more I do, the better, um, the better my results are becoming. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. You guys take care and stay tuned for vlog three. We'll see where that takes us. Uh, you guys, I promise you won't miss you won't miss a step in uh, in this uh, process. I'll cover everything. Okay, take care, folks.